What's up gamers? This is a technical crash course in game theory. So um, this is going to be a video which is going to assume that you've had some exposure to game theory, but you haven't quite put all the pieces together. Um, so in this context, we're going to be talking about uh, two main parts of a game theory course. The first part being different strategic environments and equilibrium concepts. And the second part is tools for going and solving games. Let's go. So there are really four different types of games that vary across two criterion, uh, that being information and timing. We have games of perfect information, games of imperfect information, simultaneous moves games, and sequential games. So for our perfect information simultaneous move games, we're gonna want to go and use this here, this little matrix, which we go and we refer to as a normal form normal form game. And alternatively, if we're going and we're looking at games progressing over time, we're going to have a sequential move game. Uh, this is represented as follows here. And with that comes sub game perfect equilibrium. And now we can go and uh, write this extensive form game, extensive form as uh, a simultaneous move game or represent it equally as such by going and putting in this thing known as a information set, which I'm denoting by a dotted line. Some people go and put a circle around this here. And that just means uh, for player two, he goes and thinks that about what are the possible uh, th events that could have happened. Those possible events could have been player one moving down or player one moving up without this information set, right? Player one knows for certain at this node here what happened, whether it was up or down. Now, in cases of imperfect information, uh, these are referred to as Bayesian games. And in this case, we're going to be talking about having nature as a first mover. And this is a theme throughout all the games, whether they're simultaneous or whether they're sequential. So um, in this context, we're going to go and have this sort of setup. We're going to have two matrices where our players, whether one of them or both of them, are informed about the nature of the game in question. So there's uncertainty here. Um, here, with uh, our, our perfect Bayesian equilibrium, we go and we have nature as our first mover, but we have a sequential move game, meaning that we'll go and observe the moves, but we don't actually know what the game is being played. Now. Um, there's a couple of different equilibrium concepts. We're going to have a pooling Bayesian, uh, perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium, a separating perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium, or a hybrid uh, perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Now let's go through those solution concepts on the next slide. So in terms of solving these different games, um, we're going to go and look at our simultaneous move games. Uh, we're going to have tick and bob or comparison of expected payoff. Uh, this expected payoff is just the way we would go and uh, solve for our mixed strategies. So here, um, for our simultaneous move games, we go and we consider L, right? If L is being being uh, played, what is our row loop player's best response? So it's going to be up. And if R is being played, what's our player's best response? It's going to be down. And likewise, for uh, our column player, if up is being uh, played, the best response will be left, and if down is being played, the best response is being one. For our sequential games, we're going to use backwards inductions. Backward induction. And what this means is that we're going to start at the end of the game, and we're going to look at, at this node, what is the best response of our player to? It's going to be U. And at this node, what is the best response of our player here? It's going to be D. And if our player one is considering these two options here, um, which one should he go and he pick? It's going to be D here. So our sub game uh, perfect equilibrium is going to be D, D, um, and that's going to be it. So when we're dealing with uh, imperfect information games, this is actually uh, go uh, in my series on uh, Bayesian Nash equilibrium practice for pure Bayesian games. We could like to write it as a collapsed matrix. 
and we can use the same tick and bob procedure to go and get our Bayesian Nash equilibrium here, right? And for a given equilibrium, this is just an example, we can go and say that this is the case here, um, as supported by, I guess, you know, some mu here. That's how you go right a perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium. And now for our uh, guess, um, this is over here is a Bayesian Nash equilibrium, not perfect Bayesian, but for here, um, we're looking at perfect Bayesian Nash equilibrium, and we're gonna be looking at uh, pooling strategies and separating strategies. So a pooling strategy on this standard beer and quiche payoff is when we have uh, our first player going and playing one strategy no matter what, right? And we are gonna have to look at these strategies and consider if there's any regret uh, dependent on his type. Um, so a pooling strategy is when both of these are played no matter what type it is, whether he's the strong type or the weak type. Or alternatively, our player will play uh, a separating strategy where he'll play uh, a different thing or whoops, that's not the standard result. Um, if you're familiar with this game, you'll know why I'm switching, but if you're not, don't worry about it. Um, where our strong player will go and play B and our weak player will go and play Q over here. This would be a separating strategy. Uh, alternatively, we can go and have the case where our player would go and separate if he's one type, meaning that for certain he'll go and play Q if weak, but um, if he's strong, he can go and mix between beer and quiche. That could be a possibility. And you're going to have to check each one of these strategies uh, sequentially, or not sequentially, but one after another by going and checking uh, if there are any profitable deviations in this context. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, iterative elimination of a strictly dominated strategy. Now let me just go and fix this here, because otherwise this won't go and work. That's a two and that's a negative one. What this goes and does is that it tells us um, how we can go and simplify our game by ruling out uh, dominated strategies. So by looking at L and M here, we can say that that goes and dominates R together by going and looking at the combination between the two um, here. That's going to be preferred to R, um, where we're going to say lambda is on the interval of 0, 1, right? And this is just going to go and get knocked out. Now, for this here, we're going to now think about how for our role player that A or U here, that goes and dominates D. So what that's going to do is make this smaller. And from here, we can go and solve for our Nash equilibrium here in this context. So you guys can go and try that at home. Now we're going to go and talk about uh, grim trigger strategies for repeated games. I'm not going to go into detail for what repeated games is, but it's just a, say, a simultaneous move game that is repeated over time. And what grim trigger allows us to do is that if credible threats are made, uh, any possible uh, equilibrium could be maintained. So we go and consider this little equation here, meaning that the cooperative payoff has to be greater than or equal to the deviation payoff plus the discounted uh, Nash payoff over here, meaning that he just gets discounted uh, in the first period and for his lifetime. So this here is just a result from uh, lifetime discounting. And using this, we go and we obtain our equation for Nash reversion, which is delta I star is equal to our, our ratio of the difference of our deviated payoffs minus our cooperative payoffs and our Nash payoff minus our cooperative payoff. So um, this is a crash course um, in game theory. I know I probably missed some stuff uh, on information sets and uh, I guess kidney shaped uh, information sets. Um, but I hope this video helps. I hope it's a guide. I hope it's an aid to help you guys review game theory. Take care.